So, now in this lesson, we are going to discuss saliva formation. In the combing, what we do? We basically comb the lap sheet, but the operation is basically discontinuous in nature. That is, we feed a little bit of lap, grip it, and then comb the forward part which is projecting out from the grip, and then we get a cone fringe, and the cone fringe we take it out and hold it, and the next fringe comes, falls on the previous fringe, and the cycle goes on and on. So, basically, the operation is not really continuous in nature, it is in a way discrete in nature, but Finally, we have to form a saliva which is continuous in terms of its length. So, how do we achieve this? The detached fringe is also known as wave because it is basically thin film of fibers like the kind of wave you are familiar with in the case of carding machines. That is what it looks like. The detached comb wave moves forward in each cycle. There is a net movement of the detaching rollers and by their net movement, the wave moves forward. So, let us say in this diagram, we see the detaching rollers, there is a wave pan and on the wave pan, the wave is going to land or going to be delivered by the detaching rollers. Here, a reserve of material must be formed periodically between detaching and the withdrawal roller. If you look at the withdrawal rollers, so that means the withdrawal roller must be pulling little slower in comparison to the feed from the detaching rollers. So, that within over the wave pan, we get a corrugated structure of the wave. The wave is in very loose form there and excess reserve is created here. The purpose of the reserve is that when the detaching roller moves backward, this excess wave is going to help in a way that is the wave is not going to be torn into parts. Excess material is resting on the wave pan and therefore, when this is going to rotate backward, let us say in this direction, this material will be pulled backwards without causing any damage to the overlapped structure of the wave that we have already created. Hence, an excess has to be created and it takes the form of a corrugated shape. So, the wave pan basically acts as a reservoir and makes sure that the wave is not torn apart when the detaching roller is made to turn backwards. The cone fringes as we generate, they fall on each other as it is shown here and this is how the structure is created. This is shown by this you know, lines and you can see that wherever there is a overlapping between the two lines, that is the piecing area of the wave. The wave that is there on the wave pan. Now, this wave will be moving forward, it will be pulled by the withdrawal rollers and now the wave will be fed because it is in the form of a thin sheet. It must pass through a trumpet because we have to transform the thin sheet into a round shaped sliver. So, we have to make them pass through a trumpet. The trumpet is a here in this case and B in this case. And you see at the central, there are two ways the wave collection can take place. One is called central line collection and the other one is called sidewise collection. In the central line collection, see the, if you look at the diagram, this, these are the piecing lines. So, piecing line of the wave will approach the trumpet the way it has been drawn here and 
In the other case, if we go for sidewise collections, we call it asymmetric placement of the trumpet, then the piecing line is shown in the lower diagram and you see the diagrams which are diagonal in nature. So, sidewise collection leads to partial compensation of the piecing wave. That is the piecing wave is a place where there is excess material due to overlapping between the two waves. Now, this is basically a kind of fault because mass of material is more there. Now, in order to suppress the intensity of this thickness change, what we can do is that we will distribute this thickness variation diagonally and that is what is achieved by having the, the trumpet not at the center of, but at the side. So, generally a diagonal piecing line is preferred since it will reduce the intensity of the piecing wave. This diagram shows the wave under the detaching rollers. See detaching roller is here and here these two are detaching rollers, this one and this one. And the white part in front of it is basically the wave. This is the wave, you see the structure of the wave. It is very interesting to know that if I take out one complete fringe from the detaching roller and then you want to study the mass distribution of the fringe or the wave from one end to the other, then we get a picture as shown in this diagram. It looks like pretty close to a normal distribution diagram. This is length along the detached wave, see, so this is the, the backward most end and the other side is the forward most end. So, or you can say tip and tail part of the detached fringe and this side is weight of 5 millimeter pieces, we get a profile like this. That is if this side is the tail part and this side is tip part of the wave, then there is a in between we get maximum mass is located and it gets towards the tip, it becomes thin, it thins down. That means the detached fringe, the mass distribution is not uniform. Somewhere at the middle, there is more masses of fiber is there and both sides it tapers. That is how the detached fringe wet or the mass distribution of the detached fringe will look like. So, therefore, the mass distribution though the diagram shows it is looks like symmetrical, but actually this is not symmetrical. It is not really symmetrical. It is little skewed towards the tail part. So, we have not been able to show it properly. So, uh, it will be little skewed on the tail part and this is how the mass gets distributed. Now, a detached, these fringes, detached fringes as you have already discussed, they are basically overlapped one on the top of the another. So, let us say this is one detached fringe and these are the consecutive detached fringes which are basically placing one on the top of the other. And if we keep placing them in this manner and then even try to find out the overall mass distribution profile of the detached comb fringes, then the overall profile will look like this, it will go like this and then the mass will vary in this manner and it will continue like this. Therefore, what we see here that the mass profile has a periodicity. It is not really uh, a constant mass. There are places where the mass is more, that here it is more, here it is more, here it is more, and it is more. So, there will be periodic change in mass variations 
and it is have a wavelength. The wavelength is shown here. This is how the fringes are overlapped one on the top of the other and then we move forward. We will get a sliver which will whose mass will vary in a cyclic manner. This is depicted in this diagram. Now, in this in slide, the sliver guidance is shown. Now, here there are combed hairs as the combing machines will be having not just one head. There are generally most of the machines of today will be having eight combing positions in one machines. So, from eight combing positions, we are generating eight set of fringes which is moving forward and they are getting overlapped and from each head we are actually making one sliver. So, this is how the combing head number 1 or 2, 3, 4 it goes up to 8 and from each head the cone fringes will move out and then they are directed over a table. So, cone fringes are first passed through a trumpet which will transform them into a sliver, a round shape it will be given as shown in the lower diagram. So, this is the fringe, fringe is made to pass through a trumpet and as it passes through the trumpet, it becomes a circular sliver and then the sliver is made to pass over this table, which we call sliver table. So, they first deflect by 90 degree by deflecting volume P, there is a roller basically and the because they are delivered perpendicularly with respect to the running direction of the sliver because they all will move after being delivered they have to move on the right hand side and their movement direction is at 90 degree with respect to the positions of the slide or the combing heads and hence all the sliders have to be given a 90 degree deflections and that is what is given by this small roller we call them deflecting volute which runs parallelly on the table. The deflector volute can be centrically mounted so that the distance between the sliver trumpet and the drafting rollers can be adjusted by small amount. See what we do is this that the distance from here to there up to the drafting unit. So, there is a drafting unit in front that is somewhere here and the slivers are fed and the slivers are drafted together. So, the distance from the head to the back neap of the drafting unit, a little adjustment is required and that is what is done by adjusting the positions of this deflecting volute. Why do we do it? That is what is shown in this diagram. In this diagram are shown that we are actually generating piecing waves at regular intervals. So, in the first top diagram what is shown that if these piecing waves which are generated in the slivers, if they all move together as shown in the top diagram, in that case all the pieced portions are moving together and they will also move together into the drafting zone, though they will get drafted, but the piecing wave will still exist because the piecing waves of all the four slivers in the present case are occurring at the same place. So, the intensity of the thickness variations will still be there. What we can do is that if we can make them out of phase when they are moving towards the drafting zone. So, this is the drafting zone. So, if we can stagger them the way it is shown in the lower diagram, then the excess mass will be distributed over a larger length of the sliver. So, therefore, what we need is distance adjustment because speed adjustment is not possible 
all the rollers guiding rollers are running at same speed. So, we can stagger the piecing waves with respect to each other by adjusting the distance from the combing head to the drafting rollers. So, this distance adjustment ensures that the piecing of the individual slivers are placed relative to each other to compensate mass variations due to piecing wave formation as you can see in this diagram. Slivers formed from each head are converted into a single or two slivers. Finally, sometimes they are converted into one sliver or maybe in two slivers depending upon the manufacturers. So, idea behind this adjustment of the distance is to make sure that the pieced parts do not appear together. Now, what is left is the drafting unit. You have already started the draw frame and you are familiar with the drafting unit. It is also a basically in a way it is also a draw frame. So, we have three set of rollers. We follow the exactly same principle that is there are two zones of drafting. There is a brake draft and there is a main draft. The pressure bar which is here guides the fibers in the main draft zone. We have already seen the you know, influence of pressure bars while studying the draw frame. The total draft and the brake draft can be adjusted in these machines and the drafting system, drafting system distance in the main draft zone and the brake draft zone can be adjusted. That is we can main draft setting and the brake zone setting also, brake draft zone setting is also possible. That is that means we can adjust the distance between the neap of the rollers. We can also change the main draft or the brake draft. All flexibilities are there and what has to be chosen all depends upon the fiber length that we are going to process and the quality of sliver in which we are interested. So, obviously, we are always interested in the good quality sliver and therefore, we need to adjust the draft as well as we need to adjust the setting between the rollers. So, that flexibility is there in these machines. With this, we are coming to end of this session also that the next part is basically a package formations, which we are not going to discuss now, because we have studied how to make a can in which we actually uh, put the sliver while studying carding machines or while studying draw frame. Exactly same process is followed. Finally, the sliver has to be laid within a can and in the form of spirals up to spirals. So, how do we generate the spirals and uh, these things we have already started. So, we are not going to discuss that. So, therefore, what is important here in this particular lesson is that we have to pass the wave, collect the wave, pass them through a trumpet to transform them into a round shape sliver. The slivers are made to pass over a table till they reach the nib of the back drafting rollers. The distance from the combing head to the nib line is adjustable by this eccentric volute which is there and by doing so, we try to make sure that the piecing waves of the neighboring slivers do not come or do not appear at the same place with respect to each other. They remain staggered so that the mass is distributed over a larger segment in the final sliver. That is what the purpose of it. So, with that, let us close this lesson. Thank you.